edition of that space where we get to talk about issues confronting our continent and beyond today on the session of that space i will be interacting with a very phenomenal woman a woman coming all the way from south carolina in the united states of america and has been on the continent for past 40 years and her impact is a very massive one i am talking about her excellency Ambassador Dr. Erika Bennett. She is the founder and head of mission for the Diaspora African Forum. Today we'll be diving deeper into what Diaspora African Forum represents, what does it represent for people of the Diaspora, what are the achievements so far, and what do we envision in the coming years. Before you get to hear from the Ambassador, keep your fingers crossed as we go for this quick breather and we'll be right back. Welcome back from that short breather. As I said early on, I am having the head of mission of the Diaspora African Forum, Her Excellency Dr. Erica Bennett. You're welcome. You're looking so great. Thank you, Charity. You look beautiful too. Thank you so, so much. So today we are taking a deep dive in um, what the Diaspora African Forum represents. But I want us to, I want you to take her through the journey. What actually brought you to Africa? Well, Charity, first of all, I'm delighted to be a part of this first show. And I think that we're doing this basically so that the world will know what we're doing. We are the Diaspora Africa Forum. We're the first and only diplomatic mission of its kind dealing with diaspora issues. Basically, there's two types of diasporas. There's my group, those of us taken from slavery, and we are considered the historical diaspora. Your group, people like you who know where you're from, people like um, Abigail who is going to the States and, you know, but she knows that she's from Ghana. You're considered the continental diaspora. And so basically the African heads of states, they understand now to move Africa forward, they need to include all of us. There's over 250 million of us outside of Africa. So the heads of states met and they said that we, those of us in the diaspora, the continental and the historical diaspora, we're now considered the sixth region of Africa. You know, Africa has five regions. Yeah north, south, east, west, and central. So now we're considered the sixth region of Africa. So we're very excited about that, and this is why we're doing this show, because we want the 250 million people to know that we want them to be a part of Africa. We want them, we're not necessarily saying everybody come back, but we're saying everybody look back. There's something that all of us can do. So you have been on the continent for the past 40 years and you've done so well with the Diaspora African Forum. It is something that you were very passionate about. What inspired this passion? Well, Charity, I grew up in the United States. As you said, I'm a little girl from South Carolina. And there, my parents, particularly my mother, she was always very active. And they always taught us that we are from Africa. You see, we were born in America, but basically we're from Africa. So my journey went, uh, I've never been traditional. I've never done anything traditional. And my journey after working for Honeywell and IBM many, many years ago, I had an opportunity to come to Africa and I knew this is where I belonged. My first African country was really where I lived was Liberia. Okay. Liberia, we started an orphanage there. We started, I was working for the mayor and we were decentralizing, setting up little cities. And uh, so I've always felt that this is where I belong. Um, 40 years later, I now sit at, as head of state, well, not head of state, but I sit as head of the mission for the Diaspora Africa Forum. You know, people jokingly say that I am head of state. I'm head of state of 250 million people. But on a serious note, um, you know, I really believe, and at 72, when you can say 
I really believe and I love my life. This is one of the things that I wish for everybody. And I truly, truly love my life. And I really believe that I am doing exactly what I'm destined to do. Do you know what exactly you are destined to do? So what is DAF about and how did it even start? Well, let me tell you how DAF started. DAF started, there's an African American association. When I came here 20 years ago, I've been in Ghana now 20 years. And there was an African American, there is an African American association here. And I joined and, and my thought was, you know, people all over need to have an association like this, where those African Americans who are not here can come and, you know, they can feel a safe landing. And so out of that, um, my sister, my friend, uh, Dr. Tony Luck, you know, we, we convened a, a, a summit. We invited people to come to Ghana, and we had our first uh, forum where we talked about how and what we do and how do we set this up. And, and so that's how it started. Just from that, um, we approached the African Union and saying to them, you know, we'd like you to endorse us, we'd like you to work with us to encourage diaspora participation in the development of Africa. And so they said, fine. And then fortunately for us at the time, President Kufur was the president. Okay. And he, I was on, on one of his advisory boards, and they used to call me Miss Diaspora. Because <laughs> every opportunity I got to talk about the diaspora, I would do that. And so he set up the, the late Jake, um, he gave him the position of Minister of Tourism and Diaspora Affairs. I think he did that just to get me to shut up, basically. <laughs> and so from there, um, Jake started the um, Joseph Project, and he worked with us to help us start the Diaspora Africa Forum. So that's how we were really just mm -hmm. kind of born. Um, there was no blueprint. So we made some mistakes, we, we didn't know what we were doing, we, we errors, we did some things very well, and all of that. And so today, 20 years later, we are a diplomatic mission, accredited, um, and when I go to various countries, I really am almost treated like a head of state in terms of the way, the protocols that they give us and, and the respect that they give us. You know, we um, were able to help set up diaspora offices in most of the, the African countries in mm -hmm. their foreign affairs. You know, we had a convention here where we brought people from the, from the foreign affairs offices and, you know, we told them what worked, what didn't work, that kind of thing. So it really is, it's, it's work in progress and we're still evolving as, as we speak today. But I'm very excited, and people like you, we want young, dynamic people like you, and Abigail, and Habiba, and Damaris, we want you to really continue what we've started. And uh, so we're really very happy to have you part of our team now, and we really expect a lot from you. We're looking for very good things from you, and you came up with this idea of doing this show so that showed me right there how progressive you were. <laughs> and that was two days ago, and here we are doing the interview. Yes. So um, again, I want to say thank you to you, and I look forward to, to you being really a part of our team. I promise to do that. You know, DAF has been in operation for the past years. What are some of the remarkable achievements so far that you are very proud of? How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> The number one program that I, it's my heart program, is the Junior Ambassadors Program. That's a program that we did with Plan International. And we brought children from rural, rural areas. We brought them, and most of them had never even been to Accra. And we brought them here, we did training with them, we did confidence building with them, and then we sent them to various countries. The last one was Colombia. We worked with the Colombia ambassador, and she extended um, an invitation for them to come. Um, the first six, and then the foreign affairs, actually swore them in as junior ambassadors. 
Oh, yeah, incredible. it was very good. It was very, and that's my heart program. It really, really is. And then out of that, let me tell you, the first six okay. that we sent to America, two of them are medical doctors now. Yeah, One amazing. is a teacher, the other is an electrical engineer, and then the other got the presidential award. Interesting. No, so that's what showed me that all children need is exposure. And uh, so we love that program, and that's a program that we will continue. The other program is my, we had two football teams. <laughs> um, we do this with Beecher United, that's one of our teams, and then Faith Academy is another one of our teams. And what we do is we work with the various embassies to actually give them visas. Okay. And this program is called Education Through Sports. Uh, Miracle Africa, Nadia Meribich, who's on our board as well, she lives in Italy. And so she helped create that program. And that's called Education Through Sports. These boys travel and they go out and they do a lot of recruitment and they see a lot of the various um, recruiters. And 10 of those boys have actually gotten scholarships. So they're actually getting educated as well as playing soccer. So that's another one of my heart projects. So those, just two of the ones that I really feel very good about. The other one that I feel very good about is our African Women of Excellence uh, program. And that's where we honor African women who have done things to support the world, not just in, in Africa, but all over the world. Um, we honored the two female states. We honored the late uh, Winnie Mandela. Um, we honored the chairperson, the former chairperson at the AU, Madam Zuma. Um, and so it, those are the kinds of things that really, really keeps you going. Mm -hmm. And in that program, we have a mentorship program, too, okay. where those women mentor upcoming women like you, okay. you know, and, and really kind of guide you if you want to go into politics or medicines. Uh, Dr. Juliet, who's one of our board members too. She's a medical doctor and just incredible, just incredible. And so she mentors a lot of anyone who wants to go into medicines. She, they come through her. That kind okay. Of thing. You know, interestingly, and it actually warms my heart that on the 2nd of February of this year, 2022, for the first time in history, the people of the diaspora have been recognized as the sixth region of Africa with even a flag being hoisted. How do you feel about that? Being a pioneer of this movement, how do you personally feel about that? Oh, well, just so, so, so very excited. And before we close the show, we're gonna have that flag <laughs> so that I can wave it and yes. let everybody see it. But, um, and that flag was designed by a professor Aquaniado, and you will be interviewing him in one of your coming shows. And um, it, it's, it's symbolic, you know, and that's what we want people to understand. This is a symbol which says that Africa is reaching out to our diaspora, and it's something that we can tangibly wave as our symbol, and that we have a flag. And uh, so I am very excited about that too. And you know, he, again, Professor, is just, he's an avatar, that's what we call him. <laughs> he is uh, also designing a, uh, creating a anthem. Mm -hmm. And that anthem will pretty much talk about the diaspora and us coming home. Okay. In your opinion, what do you think that this would represent for people of the diaspora? The flag yes. and the anthem. Yes. We have Africa wanting us to be home. Mm -hmm. You know, Africa really acknowledging that we are part and we want and they do want us to come home. So that's what that flag is representing. You see, we want our diasporians outside to have the same kind of mindset. Say a lot of these other cultures, the Israelis, the Indians, you know, they know that wherever they are in the world, they know their home country, they respect their home country, they do a lot of lobbying for their own country, and so that's the mindset. 
that we want to, the continental as well as the historical diaspora to begin to have about Africa. You know, one of the other things too is that, um, you know, I have dual citizenship. Okay. You see, I have Ghana and America. You know, we can do that. You can legitimately have two. Yes. And so that's what we we want our diasporas to understand too, particularly the African Americans. We want them to understand that you know you have an option. You see, you have an option. You have a whole continent that's saying we welcome you. We want you to be home. That kind of thing. Wow. Now speaking, I wanted to talk about how unique that is. Personally, I come here and then I find a very iconic wall, like two walls on the left side and on the right side, where we have the supporters wall and the Sangofa wall. But for those watching us, I would like you to educate them on what these walls represent. Thank you, Charity. <laughs> You're welcome. The Sankofa wall means Sankofa means come back to your roots. And this is a wall that we have that surrounds our embassy. And the ancestors are there. You come and put the ancestor's name on the wall. You're the descendant of that ancestor, and you put their name on the wall. We have, like, Bob Marley's name was on there. Um, Nana Rita put his name there. We have um, um, Michelle Obama's father's name there on the wall. We have Harriet Tubman. We have Rosa Parks. I mean, I can just go on and on and on the, 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 the names that we have there. We have um, George Floyd. Yes. Um, we did a big ceremony here for him as well. So um, everybody is welcome to come and put your ancestor's name on the wall. And it's very symbolic because like my mom and dad, they didn't get a chance to come to Africa, but their name is now on the wall. So every morning when I come, I salute them and, and, and I feel their presence. So that's the Sankofa wall. Then we have the supporters wall. The supporters wall, we have people like Lou Gossett, we have the Obama's names there, we have the Undersecretary of the UN, her name, we have the Costa Rica uh, former Vice President, her name is on the wall. Uh, we have Reverend Jesse Jackson, we have Ambassador Young. We have people's names on that wall who supported us either in terms of financially or some kind of way they've made a significant uh, contribution to, to DAF. Um, and of course we have our board members' names, all of our board members who are just doing a fantastic job. We could not be who we are without those board members. You know, people sometimes see this as my thing. This is certainly not my thing. This belongs to all of us all 250 million of us around the world. And our board, I think, symbolizes that. We have Dr. Juliet, we have um, Abdul Latif, we have Dr. Desta, we have Mahar Cook. We have people who have really, really contributed to us moving forward. Contributed to us moving forward. So to you watching out there, you can see this opportunity to honor your ancestor on the Sankofa wall, and you can also come and support this incredible mission happening here at Accra, and you will never actually regret this. It's really a great opportunity. Before we go, I would like us to look at DAF in the coming years. In the next few years, in the next five, you know, three years, where do you envision DAF to be? Well, first of all, Charity, DAF is really moving forward really moving forward. That flag has propelled us. We launched the flag at the um, the parliament, the, the um, central parliament in um, in Panama. You know, uh, yeah, so that was very exciting. Very, very exciting. Uh, we launched it in London. We launched it in Dubai. We launched it in, in Philadelphia. Um, so that flag is one of the things that we're doing now, launching it all over the world. Nigeria, we launched it in Nigeria with the, um, the Oni Abife. Yes. He had thousands of people there, you know, as we launched it. So it's very exciting, very, very exciting. And again, we have so many people to say thank you to. 
you see. And so I'm not even going to try to say thank you to all of them. <laughs> then this, this, would on be, and on. this would be a show of, on itself saying thank you. <laughs> but so many people have really, really supported what we're doing. Um, you know, as I said, we've made some errors, we've made some mistakes. Um, but I see us moving forward. Um, I see us, uh, first of all, opening up other offices in other African countries. You see, we, we, we didn't want to rush doing that because basically we funded ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister, Dr. Luck, and my brother, you know, and family members and stuff, we, you know, we really had put our money into this, you see. And so that, if you ask me what we've done very well, we created the awareness of what the diaspora can do. And so, and most of the heads of states understand that now. Most of the, um, the, the embassies have a diaspora unit in them now. So that's one of the things I think that we've done very, very well, is created that awareness of what and the benefit of, 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 of engaging the diaspora. The thing that we haven't done very well is the financial piece. We're so busy just kind of doing the work and spending our little Social Security money and our <laughs> money, 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 that we didn't really think about how do you institutionalize it? How do you make sure that it continues? When I had a heart attack, I had a major heart attack, and that was a wake-up call for me. It really, really was. Because it really told me, okay, if I, if, if I die, then what happens to death? Mm -hmm. So what we've done is that we have an economic commercial attache now, um, Kwame uh, Asma, who is creating programs for us to okay. generate cash okay. and generate money so that we can have a budget. Okay. Um, we're looking for a patron, someone who's, who believes in what we're doing and say, okay, we will finance you for the next five years, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're setting up programs that we can, uh, can that will help continue us. Okay. So that's the thing that we're doing right now. Okay. Um, if you want me to talk to your listening audience, I want to say to them that everybody can help us. Mm -hmm. You see, one of the things on our website, we have a, you can make a contribution. And those from the United States, we're a 501c. 501c means whatever money you donate to us, it's a tax write-off. Okay. So we have that set up. And then we're setting up a store, too, where we can have products that we can sell on our website and that kind of thing. So that's what we're really working to do now, is to really make sure that we're financially stable and able to move forward. And we're looking for dynamic young people who want to work with us, too. Okay. You know, people like you who are doing your service <laughs> with us, and you know, uh, we want you to become a part of us. We do have a program where we have brought in interns, and we have a program where students have actually come and worked with us and gotten credit and that kind of thing. So that's an ongoing program okay. that we have as well. All right. So you've heard it all from the ambassador. Before you get to actually listen to her final words. Let's take this quick turn, and when we are back, we will be showcasing the flag to you. So do stay with us and go nowhere. Don't forget you are welcome home, welcome home. Thank you very much for staying with us. Before we go, let us hear the final words from Her Excellency, Your Excellency. Well, first of all, we want to introduce you to this flag. This is your flag. This is the sixth region flag of Africa. Uh, and again, we're going to have a program where Professor Kwame Abdo, who is the designer and creator of this flag, will come and talk about the significance of it, the colors, the, um, the, the stars, so that you can really know about this flag. And it's available on our website. If any of you would like to have it, you're more than welcome to, to go to our website. Our website, which I'm sure will be on the screen, is www.diasporaafricaforum.org. And if you want to write us, info at diasporaafricaforum.org. All of this will be listed on your screen. But before I close, I just really want to say thank you very much, Charity, um, for coming up with this idea to do it, number one. 
and to have all the stuff that we ta it takes to make it happen. Um, I see you doing some incredible things, and I'm really, really honored and proud that you're part of us now. To my listening audience, I want to say this is your embassy. Um, everything that you need about it is on the website. Uh, our telephone number, our websites, and all of that. Um, I want to personally, uh, too, invite you to come to Africa. Not just necessarily Ghana. We have 55 African countries that you can choose from. Of course, we're partial because we're here. <laughs> but you're willing to go to any of the countries, whatever we can do to help you do that. We're willing to do that. So we say, Aquaro, when you get here, and we say, come home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home just by the legendary Osibisa. This is home. Ghana is the gateway to Africa, so I would recommend Ghana, but undoubtedly you can go to anywhere in Africa and just find peace at home. This is how we draw down the curtains for this first session of that Speaks. Please stay tuned as we bring you more next week. It's a bye now. My name is Charity Kesewa from home. Come with me. Come with me.